Hi everyone, um, happy Rainbow Day. I'm, I'm here today, very scared because I've never done this before on a film. I've done it lots of times teaching people in the flesh, but this is as close to my flesh as you're going to get today. <laughs> You'll be happy to know. Um, I'm going to be doing wet felting landscapes, which sounds a bit uh, hard, but actually isn't hard at all. So I'm going to show you how to do it because it's a very satisfying thing to do. Um, using the wet felting technique means that you can also make well, you make a piece of felt, which is what we're doing today. But then you can actually fold it up and sew it up, make it into bags and purses and all sorts of things. So it's a very useful thing to know how to do, basically. So first of all, you need a piece of bubble wrap. And very importantly, the bubble wrap has to be, the bubbly bit has to touch the wall because that's what causes all the action. When you make felt, it's because you are agitating felt fibres, which is wool, basically, just raw wool. Uh, and you agitate it. You can either, sometimes if you put it in the washing machine, a woolen jumper and it's on a, the wrong temperature, that will felt it because it's been agitated and the heat will make it felted but today we're just going to use bubble wrap I've got a tea towel I've got a piece of white towel that I use underneath here which you'll see in a minute in fact if I put that there now to give you an idea of what we're doing this saves you getting so wet um, in your working area now I know that will be harder to see, so what I've done today, like Blue Peter, uh, I've actually chosen some wool that isn't white so that you'll be able to see when I'm putting it on as our background. Because to do a wet felted landscape means that you're going to use wool to paint a picture instead of paint. Okay, very important is that I've got these colours here selected for this morning. Um, very important is that you use merino wool and I will demonstrate why. When you use merino wool and you have a piece of wool like this, what you're going to have to do in a minute, you're going to pull bits off like this and you're going to lay them onto your bubble wrap. See how easy that is? That looks really easy. In fact, I've just seen a, another thing on YouTube when I was checking up and they Put the hand on and they did that which actually is another way of doing it so you put your hand on the bubble wrap and you pull see how fine that is you can hardly see it. it has to be really fine now the reason i'm showing you that now is because this ball of wool here is some that i bought ages ago i think i bought it from hobbycraft or somewhere and it's called felting wool but it's not the right texture of wool because when I pull that that's not going anywhere because it's not see it's like solid see wool behaves in different ways that's very coarse that's perfect for doing net uh, needle felting into things or making 3d needle felting but not for what we're doing so going back to our colors I've chosen this color for the background the base colour which will be like you're using it for your white paper if you like to do your landscape. I've chosen in these pictures here you'll see that the far distance are a different colour to there are three different greens going on there so I've got some some there for the middle distance and some which would be in the shadow and some that are lighter so I've got different shades of green there going on which I will show you in fact when I do the picture I will actually do it upside down so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing um, we've got blues as well we've got blues some greys and even a little bit of pink here pinky grey because sometimes the sky has got a bit of pink of a pink tinge there so I've got a great big box of wool here, which I'm very fortunate to have. Look at all that, like, woo, lucky me. 
but that's taken a long time to collect all that lot. <laughs> um, so let's crack on, as they say. So we're going to cover this first layer using the wool, the merino wool, and we're going to go from side to side. Now, when you do the middle bit there, you need to just overlap it a little bit because you want it to be dense, but it, you're going to layer this up so that you are doing different layers of wool. Okay. So there you go. That is my first layer of wool. Just make it a little bit bigger, I think. I, I reckon you really only need to do this at about A4 size to finish up with an A4 size picture. I don't think you need it to be a lot bigger than that because if you do, then you have a job finding a frame to fit it because you're so pleased with the outcome. Okay, now look at your piece of, um, of work and I've noticed that here in the middle I've got a ball bit. So I'm just going to put a bit more, another dollop in the middle there. Okay, now, remembering how you do weaving from when you were a kid at school, if you're like me, you do warp and you did the warp and the weft in your weaving. And it's the same with your felting. So now, because we've gone side to side, and I can't remember whether that's warp or weft, but anyway, we're going to do it the other way now. So I'm doing it again. I'm holding it like this and I'm just pulling it gently. And this is how we build it up. So basically, you're covering your A4 space with layers of wool. And it won't take me a second. There we are, nearly there. Whoop, another tool now, I think. There you go. Okay, on the last side. Right, so now we're on to our next stage because now that's all pretty good. Look at that, looks like a cousin it, doesn't it? Haha, <laughs> I watched the Adams family the other day, that's what made me think of that. So, your next job is to put your begin to put your uh, landscape colours on. So, if I'm going to do this upside down. I will put my greens at the bottom and I put my sky at the top. Normally, obviously, I'd do it the other way up. In fact, I might get a bit confused because I'm doing it the wrong way up. So if we look at our pictures here. Now, I know these are small, but they're just to give you an idea. The uh, A good place is to look on Pinterest for ideas. That's what I do. But also, if you've got an old calendar and you've got a landscape that you'd like the look of, you can actually copy the landscape. I find it easier to copy things than to do it at the top of my head. That's a bit of a giveaway, isn't it? So if we're going to start, um, I would normally start with the sky. So I'm going to start here. Yours will be the other way around. And I'm going to use this colour because this is definitely sky blue. Okay, now this layer, as you can see, is going the other way because we're building it up, building up our colour, our sheet of felt from side to side this time. That's how it works. Okay, so that will be your background of your sky. Now onto that, I'm going to go a little bit lower actually, just a little bit lower because when we put our, when we actually put our uh, mountains in we've got plenty of room then to move manoeuvre okay onto that I've got this amazing one here look which has been blended in fact I think in there somewhere is even some silk I think but I'm just going to put a little bit of that in so that it just softens the bluntness if you like of the uh, background of the blue Okay, it's a bit weird doing it upside down, but never mind, eh? Right, so there you go. 
another thing we need are of course clouds because in this country nine times out of ten we've got clouds so here is some very beauteous white merino again very very softly make your clouds scudding across the sky uh, an interesting thing that Ralph and I have said it when we've been driving around some t some days that you see clouds as you're driving along you think and a sky and you think if you painted that people would think would think you're completely balmy because you don't have a sky that looks like that but actually you do because you never know what the sky's going to look like okay so you've got your background which is your base coat if you like for your painting with felt and then you've got your sky now we're going to look at our landscapes and we're going to see which colors we need now in these we've got a sort of a we've got a dark green right at the oh hang on a minute no we'll use that green a mid green i would say on the top now while you're doing your painting what you need to do is to work out where your light source is going to be coming from so in other words if your sun would be here say as an example or even there mm -mm, i don't know but anyway you're going to have sh light and shade within your picture so as we go we'll we'll work on that as we go so these are our mountains now to get the bit in the middle that to look make that look more mountainous you can actually start making a few little lumpy bits like this with your fingers <clears throat> excuse me silly throat and i'm going to put that all over there because actually for you as a starting point if you do the whole thing in green to start okay so they get you get the picture you get the picture that is your beginning uh, to add some shading to this I'm going to put some dark green because I'm going to have the sun as if it was coming from over here so your shade your light will be this way okay so if I do that and then I do this on this side okay that's the dark side of that mountain and there's the peak now on the peak of that mountain we can have some very light green because actually that will be where the sun is just catching that top okay and even a bit more just down there i think because there's lots and lots of different colors within a landscape um i'm going to put this over here i think yeah there you go how's that looking do you get the idea um, and then at the bottom we could even I've got some more of that beautiful mix which is the silk mix as well so it's got some different colors in there as well so if I put that down there it will give a pers perspective which is what we're looking for okay so if I hold that up, mm -mm. at the moment it doesn't look that wonderful, does it? But hopefully it will look wonderful when it's done. Right, now at this point, this is the scary bit now because we're going to wet it because, again, wet felting is what we're doing. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I will find some orange, which I've got here. And I'm going to make that actually into a ball with my finger, I think. Do you know, I've never done that before either, but it's the first time for everything. Okay. And there's the sun. So that is going to be the sun, which is going to be just there, just there behind those clouds there. Perhaps with some rays just sticking out a bit. That 
so you might even just pull it out a bit just like that because that is going to be your light source in your picture okay and when this is felted you'll notice this will all soften incredibly when it's done all right So that's your sunshine. Now, in this bottle here, I've got some soap. Now, it's actually olive oil soap, but you don't have to have olive oil soap. But it's grated soap, uh, bath soap, whatever. And it's melted with some hot water. And then I put it in a spray bottle. And then hold your hand like a hairdresser does when they're putting your hairspray on. <laughs> Show me age. And you're going to wet it. Ooh, what the heck's that? There's something buzzing down here, sorry. Don't know what it is. That's not very good. Um, on top of the wet picture, I've got an old scarf here. Um, you need something that's very, very fine. I try to use um neck curtain and actually the wool went straight through the neck curtain and felted itself to the curtain which was very embarrassing because that was the first workshop i ever did okay right so now you're going to press that water into that wall okay You've got to really work at this. You've got to just keep on and on. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get Ralph to turn off the film for a minute while I do this bit, and then we'll go on to the next part because this is a bit tedious to watch. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, so I've had a little press while you've been away, or I've been away, and I've managed to press all the water through the layers. Okay, so now it's flat and the wool underneath it now is wet. So now I'm going to get this piece of um, lagging foam. And I get the end of it and I put it onto my work, rolling it together. Can you pass me the rubber, rubber bands, Ralph, please? If you've got some. Oh, hang on a minute. Now, what we'll use, we'll use these bits of scarf that I've just pulled off the, um, off the, what's it now? Sorry, I've just had an idea. I'll do this instead. Just got two pieces of scarf here that we've just cut off the ends, actually, because it was a bit long. <laughs> so we're going to put those on the ends of there. That's so that you don't have too much slippage inside your parcel. Okay, so tying those onto there. Now, so your picture's right in the middle of that lot. Now what you have to do now is roll it for, I usually roll it a hundred times in each direction. So I'll just show you how I do it first into the middle and out to the sides into the middle and out to the sides okay and then try and remember how many times you've rolled it okay i'm going to stop again now because i'll do this off camera if you can turn me off Ralph, thank you okay so we've done it in that direction now i'm going to undo it and And unroll it very carefully. Now this time we're going to turn the work all the way round so that you've got it the other way up from how you started. Okay, I'm going to put a little drop more water on the edge of mine because it, I think it's a bit dry around the edges. Then I'm going to roll it again. Okay, so here goes. So we're going to get the end. Then we're going to hold on to the.
bubble wrap and we're going to roll it it's quite you have to do it quite tightly okay and then that end there you've got the uh, scarf sticking out or the material sticking out now I'm going to tie it on the ends again as you'll see when you have a go at this it's you need it to be really solidly tight otherwise it slothers about right here's then at the other side and again I'm going to roll it now technique Finger to wrist is how you want to do it, like that. Into the middle, out to the sides, into the middle, out to the sides. You can move it round a bit as well, so you're doing different parts of it. Okay? And you do that for 50 times. So I've done it 50 times the other way. Now I'm going to do it 50 times this way, which I haven't counted. But I'm sure you get the drift. Okay, so if I go backwards and forwards, right now I'm going to stop. I think that's probably about 50 ish. I'm going to undo it again because this time. We're going to do it from the other side. We're going to do it from the other way. So this time, actually turn your towel around. Thinking about it, it's much easier. Squash it down again. Get the roller. And we're going to roll it again. We're going to get it. So we'll be rolling it in this direction. Try and make sure that it's fairly flat. Don't let it squash if you can because otherwise it won't like it the soap on the bubble wrap makes it very slippery so just warning you that it doesn't behave very well okay so i'm going to do this now 50 times in this direction and then i'll come back so ralph's going to turn you off for half a second while i do it Okay, so I've done it. <laughs> I've got muscles like um, desperate down now. So now we're going to unfurl it again. Here we go. Okay, we're going to still keep making sure that it's flat. Then we turn it all the way round again so that the you, you manage to get all the little bits oh sorry I mean to do that then you get all the bits um, covered now on this last one I'm actually going to roll it in the towel as well so that this last roll will have a really tight roll okay so let's have a look um try it up again each piece each little bit in theory each little bit of the picture will have come in contact with the bubble wrap from different directions and it's the agitation that you're causing by um the rolling that will work and what you'll find as well is that um when we do the hot water bit, that makes it even more important. Right, so this is the last roll now. I'm going to go from side to side, into the middle. Turn it round a bit, do it again. Boring, boring, but it's very necessary. A bit like rolling pastry out. Anyway, I hope you've all had a... a not a a nice time in lockdown but i hope your lives haven't been too disrupted i think we enjoyed it because we were able to get things done in the garden and things so we were lucky enough to have a garden and make things and catch up on jobs in the house and things so 
looking at it positively. It was a sort of a positive thing rather than dwelling on all the horrible bits. And we stayed safe and healthy, so that's important, obviously. Right then, so let's have a look now. I'm going to undo it. Ooh, it's like Christmas. Let's hope it's worked, otherwise I'll delete it and do it again. <laughs> You'll never know. Right, let's have a look. And do the knots on the ends. We're going to unroll it. Turn it round. This is the moment of truth now. Can you see? I'm going to roll it very carefully. Now this is really important now because when you unroll it you'll find look, that it's stuck but it isn't felted into it, it's just stuck to the actual material. So you need to very carefully just pull it off with your fingers like that. And what I find is if I put my hand here and just hold the picture down with my hand and gently pull the scarf off. Now that bit there's a bit acting silly. I'll tell you about that in a minute. That's quite an interesting one. So if I do that. Okay. So now you get the idea of the landscape. What do you think? I think it looks like a mountain. I think it looks like a mountain, Rob? Good. Now this part here, this, this section, um, is an interesting one because this here isn't lift. It's lifting a little bit. You do the pinch test. So as long as you can't pull threads off, that's moving a bit there as well. That's got a bit of gunk on it. Yeah. Um, this bit here, I actually put on after the first part. So that's probably why it's not acting sensibly. In fact, I think that might be a bit of originally been a bit of cloud which has moved itself but um can you see how that's lifting here that's lifting that shouldn't be doing that so what we need to do now as they say is go back to the drawing board so what i'm going to do is put some more water on that bit and actually on this bit here as well because that's not completely joined okay just give it another little squirt. Put your scarf back on, your material back on. And press. And press. Hard. Okay really hard really squeeze that water through right let's try that again now we're going to roll it again i think we'll do it in the towel again and we'll roll it really tightly this time with the towel it might be a better if it's in the towel really tighten it up okay right let's do it up again and i'll roll it again and then ralph will let me do the reveal afterwards. Ralph, can you turn me off for a minute, please? Right, I'm going to undo it. If you notice that time, I didn't put the pipe in because I wanted it to make it a little bit tighter. So let's hope it's worked. Let's unroll it. Whoa. That's quite the deliberate mistake, rolling the wrong way. Right, so we're going to undo it. That's better. That's better. Right, now that's much more solid. You can see it's not moving. When I pinch it now, it's not moving. Okay, so there is the landscape. From a distance, it will look like a landscape. Um, and now I'm going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to get, put this in, virtually boiling water as long as I don't burn my hands up and then into cold back into hot and back into cold 
But Ralph's just been and bought me this to show you. This is this is a frame to give you an idea of how this will look when it's framed. Can you see that? How about that? So to give you a good idea of your finished article, which we'll look at at the end. Right, we're going to press stop again now and I'm going to dunk it and I'll be back. I thought actually before I start putting it in the water I'll just show you how robust it is look that's our background piece that's our wall that we put on first as our paper if you like for doing our painting in wool and it's solid it's a good it's a good solid piece of felt um, and when we've done the next technique with the hot water which will really lock it in uh, after you've done that you could actually use this you can fold it up make it into as i say into purses handbags and all sorts even hats which i'm gonna have a go at one day as well perhaps we'll do that as a workshop one day anyway i'm gonna go and dunk so see you in a minute so this is the finished picture it's been in and out of the boiling water I mean, it was seriously hot water. I did it once with very hot water and then I thought, actually, I'll find some rubber gloves. And I dunked it in a bowl with boiling water first and then I put it in very cold water. And you leave it in there for about a minute, I'd say, in each and then take it out. But in between times, you can just do this, squeeze it up like that and get all the water out because it's actually now material. Look at that. It's amazing. Okay, so that is your finished picture. Now, if I hold that up with the towel, you get an idea of what we've just made. And, oops, Ralph gave me the frame before, so we can do that as well. I don't think I can do that, actually, Ralph. Can you put that so it goes down on, shows down? Oh, hang on, let's do this, let's do this. Let's just do that there, and then I'll lift it up there like that. Can you see, when it's in the frame anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's very effective to have a, a frame. And now you see as well the importance of trying to make your picture a size that will fit inside a frame, because I've had people that have made them about, you know, all the wrong sizes to fit in any any possible frame. So. It's always a help. Okay, right, so when this is dried, then I'm, I actually will do another little workshop about felting using a needle, doing needle felting into this well, wet felting landscape to give you an idea of how you can put detail into your landscape. So we'll do that, I'll do that tomorrow. Okay, nice to see you, goodbye.